Hello, we are the Eagle Pitcher Capstone Design Team. This is our work on the Battery Machine Learning System, or as it's better known as, the Battery Oracle. This project was led by Frank Puglia, who is the Director of Research and Development at Eagle Pitcher, and Christopher Sharon, a member of last year's Eagle Pitcher Capstone Team, who now works as a software engineer at Eagle Pitcher. The team is comprised of me, Cameron Emerald, a computer engineering student with a minor in robotics, Paul Perry, a student dual majoring in computer engineering and computer science, and Santush Rajendran, an electrical engineering student who is also minoring in robotics. Our sponsoring company, Eagle Pitcher, is one of the leading companies for battery and power technologies. Their tech is being used globally in a wide range of applications, such as defense, aviation, and medical fields. Their batteries even hold a crucial role outside of our world, since they have their batteries in the ISS, the Mars rover, and more. Project Motivation Batteries are commonly required to deliver high power and energy while exposed to dynamic conditions and over a long service life. While advancement in battery performance develop rapidly, improvement to the battery management system have consistently lagged behind. The battery oracle will lead in to advancement in the BMS design, improvement to safety and longevity of future batteries. The objective of the project is to develop improved machine learning methods and algorithm to improve performance of lithium ion battery management system for a variety of battery applications. Additionally, the team will evaluate and select tools to for develop machine learning solutions. The anticipated best outcome for this project is to develop the Battery Oracle machine learning system, applying the lessons learned from AMBAT's program to identify indication of lithium ion batteries for specific use cases. Secondly, demonstrate the application of the battery oracle methods to empirical data produced on the AMBETS system for fault detection and life optimization. Lastly, propose optimization to the BMS design for applications such as electric vehicle direct energy weapon to improve battery safety, performance, and longevity reducing the risk of batteries in more extreme scenarios. Summary of team accomplishments includes familiarizing ourselves with the AMBETS platform from the previous year team, evaluated the AMBETS platform to find any variation and noises in the system, conversion of digital twin to Python for ease of use, creation of various tools needed for the data process and analysis such as profile generator and p-value statistics tool. Started the machine learning process consisting of learning the best model to use and how to use AWS SageMaker. Built a short circuit that increases in, a in battery impedance which when turned on. And lastly assembled a second PCB with custom built battery holder to get accurate impedance data. This project has the potential to have a large economic impact, uh, seeing as currently there are no other companies developing a battery management system that utilizes machine learning. Um, if successful, our project would be able to ensure safer, longer lasting, high performance lithium ion batteries, unlike anything else on the market. The block diagram here shows a simplified overview of the project. Um, essentially what we have is two different avenues to generate data from, being both the embeds platform from last year, as well as our own digital twin system. Um, from these systems, we're able to take the data generated and use it to train machine learning algorithms, which in turn will add um, additional safety and functionality features to a BMS. Now, moving on to our individual contributions, Cam will start it off by showing you what he's been working on. My main efforts for the past year were on generating and finding patterns in the data. This is through use of our data generator, which we call the Digital Twin. Using that, it was simple to view the data in ways not possible before and find outliers amongst the data. The digital twin was originally an Excel file that was given to us by Frank and Chris. Once converted to a Python program, data was able to autonomously be generated within seconds. Once we were ready to generate faulty data, an anomaly version of the digital twin was made. This new version allows for time-triggered faults to be inserted. 
These faults could happen to any cell at any time within the data profile. The next step was to analyze the data to try and find the anomaly. With methods provided by the TDs, derivative and z-score calculations were inserted into the digital twin for data visualization. Both of these methods, with their seemingly limitless combinations, proved to show faults within the data. For example, the graph to the right is the z-score of the cell temperatures. It is very clear that around time 650 that a fault occurs. This graph is also able to identify which cells are faulty. While I was doing the more math intensive analyzation, the next designer, Paul, had a completely different approach. I spent the majority of my efforts working on machine learning implementations for anomaly detection, as well as developing a few smaller pieces of software um, that the team and I could use for data analysis. One of the pieces of software I worked on was a digital analysis tool. Essentially, it's a Python script that enables us to port in data collected from the battery management system or our own digital twin. Um, it does so as taking the files as CSV. That data is then processed using a couple different methods and is displayed on a dynamic, interactable graph. The photo here is an example of the graph generated using the tool. As far as the machine learning aspect of this project is concerned, I worked on implementing several different algorithms, such as k-nearest neighbor and isolation force, in the hopes of detecting anomalies within our data set. While we were able to draw conclusions, nothing concrete was resolved, mostly for the fact that the system was having a hard time parsing and ultimately learning from our data. To solve this, we experimented with different input formats as well as attempted to implement an unsupervised version of the model. Now onto the findings. After several iterations and research into the matter, we uncovered a few different weak points within our current approach. One being that the way we were generating and labeling the data made it extremely difficult for the machine to actually learn from it. And so adjustments to data generation were required. We also uncovered that the simulated anomaly occurring within the system itself was at times extremely hard to detect as it was a relatively small deviation from the other cells. We could of course cause a larger change to occur, but it was important for our data to be as realistic as possible to an actual system. And lastly, we noticed that in our attempts to make the system as realistic as possible, we introduced a fair bit of noise in the form of natural cell deviation. To solve both this and the last issue addressed, we would need to implement some form of standardization or scaling to the data that would highlight the important features while still remaining true to the original data. It is important to note here that we are trying to accomplish something that has never been done before, and so any findings are significant in the way that they provide a clear direction for future research. Now on to Santush and the work he's been doing. As the only electrical engineer in our team, my technical contribution is to optimize performance of the hardware to improve data quality, which is being used for anomaly detection and machine learning. In fall 2022, my main goal was to evaluate AMBAT's platform, identify any variation between BMS and DAC data, and the positive versus negative connections. Also identify any inaccuracy in the data resolutions. In spring 2023, my main goal was to correct any inaccuracy in the real data coming off of the hardware and make the real data more usable and reliable for anomaly detection. The box plot on the left shows the impedance measurement from BMS data versus the measurement with Fluke 521 tool. The cell impedance are twice or three times higher than the measured value. Also, BMS data have quite a bit of variation and wide range of distribution in the cell impedance. Second box plot shows exactly what causes the increase in resist impedance, which is the positive terminal. This is due to poor connection between battery terminals and battery holder terminals. When the faulty cells were inserted uh, among with the normal cells, data collection showed that there is not there is a variation and wide range of distribution in the cell impedance which led to faulty cells being not detected and needed to be fixed to get accurate data. Since I was able to locate the battery and battery holder terminals for the cause of increase in cell impedance, one of the method I tried is to, to reduce is by applying silver proxy on the battery terminal and battery holder terminals as it will help to increase the area of contact as you can see in the box plot, Fluke 521 measurement data and before and after silver proxy data, the BT 521 measurement shows that cell 9 and 
so three are the outliers, which are the faulty cells, but it went undetected in the before and after server proxy data. After server proxy, the variation in the data have been reduced and the value of the battery impedance are a lot less than before, but it is also noted that the faulty cells are not detected through cell impedance. Additionally, I built a small circuit with the resistor and a switch, which attaches to the battery. The purpose of the circuit is to simulate an increase in resistance when turned on and act as a self-discharge. In the beginning, I had quite a bit of noise in the data, but after applying silver proxy and uh, using low resistance, made it data clear as shown in the before and after graph. A second method I tried to get better impedance data from the embeds platform is to assemble a second PCB with modification to the battery connection to the PCB. Using male and female RATSAC connectors, which have less than a couple milliohms of resistance, I was able to resistant weld nickel tabs to the battery terminals and solder the tabs to a female uh, RATSAC connectors and built a 3D uh, printed holders to hold it all together. As you can see from the data, the impedance were much better, less variant, variable, and less distributed. I was able to locate the outliers in the box plot shown, which are the faulty cells. The impedance of the faulty cells were about 3 sigma out, which makes an outlier. Overall, the project was a success. We were able to identify and correct several faults in the hardware, resulting in a usable and reliable data generation. And although the machine learning component was not completely realized, substantial headway was achieved in identifying the most sensitive data, relevant detection models, and most importantly, a data format that did result in the unlearning of detected anomalies. Lastly, I would like to thank our technical directors, Frank and Chris, for providing us with so much support throughout the semester and last semester as well as our consulting director, Brendan, for all the help. Professor Zhang for allowing us to use his lab and the equipment in it, and last but not least, Dr. Sunak for putting this whole thing together and giving us the opportunity to work on something that really matters in the world.